Welcome to the first of what hopes to be many British Trombone Society interviews. Today I'll be talking to someone who's pushed the boundaries of trombone playing and performance, someone who I believe without, the trombone would not be the instrument it is today. That person is Christian Lindbergh. At the beginning of a very busy and exciting week with the Royal Liverpool Philharmonic Orchestra, thank you for taking time to speak with me today and to give the BTS members a glimpse into your incredible career and life. Thank you very much. Um, we have some questions from our Twitter uh, members and also e over email and Facebook. So I'm just going to run down a couple of questions which people have been writing in. They just want from all manners of what's your favourite chocolate, what kind of music do you listen to when you're not playing, the differences in your life and also your career. Um, in what way has conducting and composing influenced your trombone playing? Ooh. I don't know really. I think maybe it has broadened my. I mean, I mean, I'm a much more complete musician now, so you can see it from a different angle. But I'm not sure if they actually made my trombone playing better. I'm not sure about that. But but for sure, it's uh, it's as a musician, mm. definitely. Yeah. So how was your role as? Has it helped at all? Being a, or is it just as a musician? Has it helped um, uh, influence certain parts of you, com uh, you know, com uh, composing or conducting? Does that help with the trombone playing or not? Is it yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, that the fact that I played an instrument and knew what it was to learn an instrument and how much it takes mm. helps me a lot as a conductor because I can appreciate when people take a breath and need a clear entrance, and I can understand that they cannot go on a downbeat like that. Mm. And a lot of things like that uh, have been very, very helpful. And at the moment, I feel that all three is so linked together. And you become sort of a musician, and you see yourself as a trombonist more like uh, that's one part of it, just. Mm. And uh, now it's very exciting. I mean, I've noticed um, with performing your piece today, um, and rehearsing it, the first time I've had the pleasure of playing your music, I've noticed that just the parts are so easy to read. Although the music, the music is difficult, although the music is difficult yeah. and parts and the, the fantastic fugue and the, expi expi um, the fugue and part of the music is just so well written, we can read the parts and it's very easy to read and I've noticed this from... That's good! Yeah, I hope... Because, well, well, well I'm, I'm very... I think the reason is that I don't use a publisher outside my family. Okay. My wife is publishing my music. She's doing this uh, initial tarot so I always have mm. close connection with it. When things are not practically written, yeah. I can change it. Okay. And so in, with the publisher, you have to send the score and then, yeah, and then leave it to them and you don't know what happens with the parts. Yeah, even so the patients there. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. She's brilliant at that. She's yeah. a bassoon player, so okay. she, she knows so that. This. <laughs> <laughs> um, in, uh, how, in your opinion, does the approach of a solo trombone player differ from that of an orchestral trombonist? Now, this has come from Matthew G. Yeah. So it's a very, you know, very good question, I think. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, how does, so from a solo Trombone player's point of view. Yeah. How does any your approach or the way the way you come to things? How does it differ? I the funny thing is I want to say that there is not much difference. Yeah. There is not much difference. I mean people people tend to have this idea that that a soloist can be free and can do that, and an orchestra musician have to be very strict and so on. And I think as a soloist you you also you have to have the same kind of of, of pulse and same kind of, of uh, possibility to listen to other people. I don't think there is a big difference. And I think uh, people who say that orchestra playing for trombone is like very only chords and sort of not so musically interesting, I think it's extremely uh, mm. challenging. And I think I would like to see, I mean, the better the player becomes in orchestras, the more they're going to make music out of, out of this also. Mm. So I think the difference is very, very small. Okay. Maybe I play a little bit f more amount of notes <laughs> as a soloist. Um, another question we've had in, on through the Twitter was um, who are the composers working today 
apart from yourself, <laughs> who you'll be keen uh, to write new works for the trombone and to kind of help it explore new boundaries. I mean, explore yeah. enough boundaries. Mm -hmm. but to explore Actually, I, have, I have fulfilled my dreams. The only sad thing was that I, I was very close to getting Ligeti to write something. He was, mm -hmm. he was about to do that and I was uh, in a jury that gave him a prize when he just got in, ill and we talked about it. But I, I got Berio, I got Takemitsu, Xanakis, all the big names from that time. And, uh, well, today it's like something that I don't have time for anymore. So I mm. hope someone else is taking it up. And I'm sure there are people out there who are around 35, 40, that are going to become the big stars, mm. big, big star composers. And it takes time to know who these people are. You have to get to know them personally, mm. also. But I mean, I mean, Turnage wrote something that was one of my British favorite, and um, I mean, there are many, many, many good composers mm. out there. So I hope everyone who yeah. brings something in and might be a completely unknown twenty-five-year composer who write the Dvorak drama for Jerry. For us, it might happen next year. You don't know. Do you think there's uh, much more in the sense of the technical ability and uh, the technical limitations of the instrument that is going to hinder that in any way? So that is, has the, have you pushed the trombone to its boundary, or do you no, feel that in no. some places that we can no, explore I think more? I, I definitely, definitely. Mm. There's lots. There's always lots to do. Mm. Um, I mean, your your um, recordings of. You know, from <laughs> an early period. I did some experience in music. Yeah. I mean, you did uh, the, the, the kind of you did do the classical repertoire yeah. that, that you know the student the students have to go through the stages of the Vida and the Mozart Symphony and yeah. uh, the usual. I don't know what you did the the and all yeah. these things. Yeah, uh, I went. I pushed. I pushed it very hard because I had to to make a living out of it. I mm. really had to push it to that level. But it certainly. I mean, it's no more difficult to play technical things than it just takes a lot of time and energy yeah. and, well, and lots of lots of stamina. And I mean, I'm sure someone someone had to do it, didn't they? Yeah. And said, <laughs> I will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. the Vivaldi, for example. Yeah. Was, I can't play today. I, <laughs> but I could if I got three month practice. I yeah. could do it again. But, but it shows that the trombone can do that. Um, Absolutely. And, you probably, you probably and that's why I did it, because I got so angry with these people saying, you're never going to make a career but you, because you can't play fast on a trombone. Okay. And you can't play, it's, it's an instrument that can only work with chords. Mm. So that's why I did it. Just to show people you can Absolutely. do it. Absolutely. <laughs> I got so angry, so I said, no. Um, what's the best piece of advice you would give to a young player? So anyone who's just beginning or even studying at say a music college level today, how do they progress as a player? Obviously there you've you've developed a platform now that you can as, mm -hmm. a, as a special person go on to become a soloist mm -hmm. and show the trombone in a solo solo light. Mm -hmm. Of course the players that can do both and the orchestra and yeah. lots of people with a session and different things. What advice would you give to the all round trombonist to help improve what they do and to help them succeed? In the profession, mm -hmm. I would the, the most important thing is a long term plan. I think you have to you mustn't panic practice ever. Uh, you have to sort of think five years ahead and build every part of your playing. And some people say, "Oh, I'm going to practice five hours today." And then we practice five hours a couple of days and they do that for five days and they get completely knocked out. Yeah. That to be able to practice five hours a day or eight hours as I did one year, you've got to slowly build it up day by day. Like practice maybe one and a half hour every single day for three months, then maybe one hour and 40 minutes, then maybe one hour and 50 mm -hmm. minutes. You have to have so much patience and you have to practice every day every aspect of the, mm. the, the, the instrument. And productively. Yeah. Of course, I mean, you can't just play through some no. of these and there's some... No, 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 you've got, to, you've got to use your brain slowly and slowly, slowly build it. Mm. Without work, it's not never going to happen. Work hard, that's the thing. Mm. Right? That's the best advice. But don't work so hard so you get 
exhausted and overtired. Because I do, I, I know at the moment there's a lot of a lot of good, very good trombone players around yeah. coming yeah. through through youth and that you know the National Youth Press Band, the National mm -hmm. Youth Orchestra, there's some fantastic um, talent mm -hmm. in those in those ensembles and also through schools and then into music colleges. And do you think that from your insight into the UK? Do you think there's enough space, you know, for all these trombone players and all this talent? Because perhaps you, uh, you might have noticed or seen that from because of you, more people are practicing. More people <laughs> want to say, "I want to do this. I want to do the Motorbat Concerto. I want to do this." Yeah. Have you noticed? Well, I think I think <laughs> possibly if we if we stick together, yeah, and if we are become friends within the trombone community. Mm. And we, if we stop sort of fighting or trying to hit the other or say that that's an idiot or so, if we can stay together, we can make our part of the music world bigger. Mm. And if we think of the world like this, the music world like this, we're in this little corner here. And if we start fighting to together, it's going to be smaller and smaller. Mm. But if we sort of grow together, it's going to be more and more opportunities for everyone. Mm. So that's very important to, 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 to remember. I mean, in my beginning, in the beginning of my career, there were some orchestra players and some orchestras where the trombone players went to the, to the management and said, please bring Christian Lindbergh in. Mm. And that's, they gained a lot by doing that. And there was also a lot of other music, music uh, orchestras where the solo trombone players said, "Don't bring him in. I'm mm. much better. If I, if there is a solo engagement, I'm going to take it." Mm. Even one of the big one of the uh, trombones in the big American orchestra said, "If because the, the orchestra wanted to bring him as a soloist, he said, if you bring him in, I quit." So <laughs> that <laughs> kind of uh, yeah. counter extremely counterproductive. Mm. And he himself, of course, made himself a terrible, sort of, uh, hurt himself so yeah. much. He didn't hurt me at all. I, I used it as, as great PR. You can go somewhere else. <laughs> no, I, I can tell that story and a lot of people want, yeah. to, <laughs> want, want to make sure they're not like that. Yeah. So, so for me it was just personally, but for the trombone world, my God, it's yeah. horrible. So we've got to stick together. I think and then it's going to be a bigger and bigger. I think that's just a fine example for the young generation of trombone players yeah. to hear that and yeah. to know that, yes, there, there is competition for work, mm -hmm. there is competition for jobs, but if there is, and maybe you are, you are doing this and this and that, and mm -hmm. why don't go out and do something yeah. different? Yeah, why don't yeah, go absolutely. out and, and push the boundaries of what you're doing and enjoy yourself and explore music mm -hmm. rather than just trombone playing? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm going to ask you now, yeah. what's your favourite piece of solo trombone repertoire. Now either you've you've performed you've performed every piece. <laughs> yeah I think I think I think the the best piece written is the motorbike concerto. I think it's a, it's it's the Dvorak trombone concerto Dvorak trombone concerto yeah. of the trombone. I think he's he's got everything in there and it's appealing for a for a wider audience. It's mm. extremely well written for the orchestra. It's really a, a super piece. And for the, the player. The yeah. Music, yeah, and it's very nice. I, mean, I become so happy because I, don't, I can't play it anymore because I, 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 I only play in conduct. Well, I do some, some concerts with mm -hmm. Subin Mehta or some things. But basically, I am too much into composing and, and conducting. So when I, when I play, I conduct mm -hmm. also. And motorbike, maybe <laughs> one day I will, but it's very difficult to play and yeah, I've got a piece at the same time. Would you say but I see that, see that now uh, Ian Mousel is doing it and he's, he's yeah. uh, seeking my advice all the time. We have a big, very interesting letter yeah. conversation where he asked me about double tanging and mm -hmm. uh, everything. So it's very exciting and he's, he's going to bring it forward. I think. Again, that's something that everyone's sticking together. Yeah. Ian coming to you very and good. saying, very good. do this, and then very someone good. goes to Ian, and it's all absolutely, passed, absolutely. passed down that's the line. And, and that's how the Finnish conductors did. Mm. That's why there are millions of conductors around the world, because they helped each other. Yeah. So now they're the mafia on the road. <laughs> <laughs> would, you, would you say your, your primary, your primary job is as a composer now? 
Yeah, Would yeah, I think so. Well, that's the most important thing. But it seems that at the moment, the thing that takes up the most time is conducting. Okay. And I enjoy it immensely. Yeah. When I mean, when it's good, when it's yeah. when it's like uh, Liverpool Philharmonic, they are so wonderful to work with, mm. and they're so responsive. And 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 if you say things, they do it immediately. Mm. We can come to orchestras where there are lots of assholes. <laughs> and those those orchestras <laughs> are not fun to be with when they start to to don't want to do what you. Mm. And they'll never become a great orchestra. No, 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 no. But 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 when you have, I have about. Let's say 10, 15 orchestras where this, there is a, a mutual understanding, mm. and then it's, it's unbelievable to conduct. I mean, would, you like, would you like your own orchestra at some point? I have already. Oh, I, have a third, I, I have my third orchestra now. I had, uh, first, I had the um, uh, Swedish Wind Ensemble Nordic Chamber Orchestra, and now I have Arctic Philharmonic Orchestra. Mm. So I started oh, there in 2009, and I have a contract till 17. Ah, so <laughs> so I have my own orchestra, absolutely. Mm. So what kind of uh, what music do you listen to? And what music do you enjoy aside from, say, the trombone? Do you only listen to classical music, or do you try and do? You... Yeah, of course. Obviously, I time, obviously, time is. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I listen. Of course, I listen to all the music that I can now. Yeah. So it's like lots, and I, I do a lot of Alan Petersson. I do a lot of Stravinsky and Bernstein, and I listen to all of this. But when I, uh, what I listen to very often, what I love to listen to is Chet Baker, uh, Bill Evans, yeah. Jill Evans, mm -hmm. uh, Miles Davis, uh, Coltrane, uh, what else do I like to listen to? The Beatles, of course, mm -hmm. always. And... Because uh, I think you agree it's important that when, especially young, again folks, mm -hmm. just on younger players, when when they're learning, when they're coming through, and they, they all going and just listening to as you did, they'll go and listen to you, and they'll listen to Ian Bowsfield, and they'll listen oh, yeah, to yeah, yeah. say say different um, Joe Lessie, and, yeah. and, and they listen to just the trombone pieces, and then maybe the odd symphony with the trombones, and it's always yeah, the trombone. Yeah, 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 I think yeah. it's listen to things without the trombone, yeah, and then you'll hear yeah, start yeah, hearing yeah, perhaps absolutely. a bit more music yeah. and different things. Yeah, and, very important, I yeah. think. Um, but thank you for speaking thank to us today. Thank you. It's very kind of you to give your time. Yeah, thanks. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Take care. <laughs> <laughs>